Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Who redeems us from sin and death. From us and for our salvation, Christ became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Dear people of God, in this holy week, let us hear once more of our Lord's passion and death. With heart and mind, let us go to Gethsemane and the halls of judgment, and yes, even to the hill of Calvary. Let us hear in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose in Christ's suffering and his ultimate sacrifice for all humankind. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died. Let us remember in Christ's name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, all who are sick and who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, as well as those who do not love the Lord Jesus Christ. We remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in another greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the crucified and risen Lord. Let us pray that we might be taught humility as we remember Christ's humiliation, that we might be taught obedience as we remember Christ's obedience unto death, 
and that we might be taught to love one another as we remember Christ's love for all people. Finally, let us pray for those things which our Lord would have us ask as we pray the prayer of his heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The religious leaders who collaborated with the Roman occupation were conspiring against Jesus. They had gathered in the palace of Caiaphas, the high priest. This man had received the high priesthood at the hand of Valerius Gratus, the former Roman governor, and now retained the office under Pontius Pilate. They all were planning to quickly arrest and destroy Jesus so as to avoid a revolt among the Jews. Then one of the twelve named Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, went to the chief priest and asked, What will you give me if I deliver Jesus to you for the governor? When they heard the offer, they were glad and promised Judas thirty pieces of silver. From that hour, he sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. At the beginning of the feast, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, 
the disciples of Jesus approached him and asked, Where do you wish us to prepare the Paschal meal? Jesus took two of his disciples and instructed them, Go into the city, and you will see there a man carrying a water jar. He will show you a suitable place. The two did as Jesus commanded. They entered the city where they found the man with the water jar who brought them to an upper room. When evening had come, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you truly that one of you is going to betray me. The disciples were stunned with grief and began to protest one after another, surely not I. Jesus replied, the betrayer is one of you dipping his hand in the dish with me. The Son of Man is fulfilling scripture, but woe to that man through whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Then Judas slipped into the night. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. After reciting the blessing, he broke it and gave it to his disciples as he said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then taking the cup with the traditional blessing, he gave it to his disciples as he said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is being shed for many. I tell you in truth, that I shall not drink again for the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it fresh in the kingdom of God. Having sung a hymn, they left the city for the Mount of Olives. Thank you. 
they walked, Jesus said to his disciples, You will all desert me this very night. So it is written in the prophet Zechariah, Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Then Peter protested, Though I'll desert, I will remain by you. Jesus replied, I, will tell, I tell you truly that in this very night, before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. Still Peter maintained, Even though I must die with you, I will never deny you. And so declared all the disciples. Jesus halted at an olive grove called Gethsemane. Then, going apart with Peter, James, and John, he left them to watch and continued a little farther alone. There he fell on his face in anguished prayer. Soon he returned to the three on watch and found them sleeping. Rousing them, he asked Peter, Could you not watch with me for just one hour? Watch and pray that you are not put to the test, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went apart in troubled prayer, and again he treated to find the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. A third time, Jesus withdrew to pray, and a third time he found the disciples sleeping. Then Jesus said, Sleep on and finish your rest. Now is the time for the Son of Man to be delivered into the hands of sinners. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus had not finished speaking before Judas, one of his own disciples, arrived with a group of Roman soldiers and other armed men from the temple. Now the betrayer had arranged with the authorities for a sign and had said, the man whom I kiss is the one you want. And in accord with this arrangement, Judas went directly to Jesus and cried out, greetings, master, and he gave him a kiss. Judas responded, Jesus responded, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Immediately the soldiers laid hands on Jesus and held him fast. Then one of the disciples with Jesus drew his sword and cut off an ear from the slave of the high priest. But Jesus said to him, sheathe your sword. All who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Do you not know that I can call upon my Father and that he will respond to me at once with more than 12 legions of angels. 
Then turning to the mob, Jesus continued, Have you come for me as against a rebel bandit with swords and clubs? Why did you not seize me in the temple where I sat teaching day by day? Were you so afraid of the religious authorities that you must come for me by stealth? Nevertheless, your actions are fulfilling the words of the prophets. Then all his disciples forsook him and fled. Those who had seized Jesus brought him to Caiaphas, whom the Romans had made a high priest. Peter followed at a distance as far as the courtyard. There he sat with the attendants and warmed himself by the fire. The high priest had gathered his whole council, and they began to arrange the case against Jesus, which they would prove to Pontius Pilate, the governor. The charge was that Jesus claimed to be king of the Jews, and they brought in many false witnesses, but to no avail. Finally, two came forward and testified, we heard this man say, I will tear down this temple made with hands, and within three days build another not made with hands. The testimony was evidence that Jesus claimed an authority over temple affairs, which traditionally belonged only to the rulers of Israel. And in those days, Israel was ruled from Rome. Yet even these witnesses were unable to agree on their testimony. Finally, Caiaphas stood up and examined Jesus directly. Have you no answer to these charges, demanded the high priest. Jesus remained silent and answered nothing. Then the high priest put the question of kingships in terms of the royal titles, anointed and son of God. Are you the anointed one, the son of man? Then the high priest turned and said, what need have we of witness? He has condemned himself. They all concurred that Jesus was indeed worthy of death. Then those holding Jesus began to spit on him. They covered his face and were striking him as they taunted him and said, O anointed one, prophesy who it is who is striking you. Now Peter was warming himself in the courtyard when a small slave girl entered. She confronted Peter and said, You also were with this Jesus the Nazarene. Peter quickly gave a denial. I do not know what you are talking about, he replied, and went outside into the gateway. Meanwhile, the cock crowed. The slave girl followed Peter out and said to the bystanders, this man is one of them. Again, Peter denied knowing Jesus. After a little while, the bystanders said directly to Peter, surely you are one of them, for you speak with a Galilean accent. Then Peter began to swear with an oath, I do not know this person of whom you are speaking. But the cock interrupted him as it crowed for the second time. Immediately, Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly.
When morning arrived, all of the chief priests, along with the other Roman collaborators, bound Jesus and delivered him over to Pontius Pilate, the imperial Roman governor. When Judas saw what was happening, he knew that Jesus was doomed, and he repented. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and confessed, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. What is that to us? They responded. That is your affair. Judas threw down the 30 pieces of silver in the temple. Then he went out and hanged himself. Picking up the silver pieces, the chief priest said, it is unlawful to put this silver into the treasury for it is blood money. Whereupon they used the money to buy the potter's field for the burial of strangers. Therefore, that field is known to this day as the field of blood. Jesus stood before the Roman governor as the accusers made their charge. We found this man perverting our nation, they said. He was forcing us to pay taxes to the emperor and proclaiming himself anointed king. The governor asked, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, you have said so. The chief priests were accusing him of many things. Therefore, Pilate again spoke to Jesus. Have you no answer to give? He asked, look at how many accusations they are making. Jesus astonished Pilate by remaining silent. At the feast of Passover, Passover, the governor used to release a prisoner, and some were urging Pilate to do so at this time. Now, there was a notable rebel in prison with those who had committed murder during the insurrection. His name was Barabbas. Therefore, the chief priests arranged a demonstration to demand Barabbas. Pilate asked them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus the Anointed One? The demonstrators shouted, Barabbas! Pilate responded, What shall I do then with Jesus the Anointed One? The crowd shouted, Crucify him! Pilate continued, Are you certain of his guilt? The crowd took up the chant, Crucify him! Crucify him! Again Pilate spoke, Shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar, cried the demonstrators. Then Pilate agreed to release Barabbas, but Jesus, the anointed one, he handed over to his soldiers for scourging and crucifixion. Wasn't it a pity and a shame? And he never said a mumble and word. Was 
Wasn't it a pity and a shame? And he never said a mumbling word, not a word, not a word, not a word. They pierced him in the side, and he never said a mumbling word. They pierced him in the side, and he never said a mumbling word. Not a word, not a word, not a word. His blood came trickling down, and he never said a mumbling word. His blood came trickling down, and he never said a mumbling. Not a word, not a word, not a word. He bowed his head and died, and he never said a mumbling word. He bowed his head and died, and he never said a mumbling word. Not a word, not a word, not a word. The soldiers led Jesus away within the governor's palace. There they assembled a whole battalion. They clothed Jesus in royal purple. They set a crown of thorns upon his head and shoved a reed between his fingers for a scepter. They began to mock him by kneeling before him and proclaiming, Hail, King of the Jews! They also spat upon him and smote him on the head with a stick. Then, after mocking him, 
They took away the purple robe, returned his own crows, and brought him out to crucify him. On the road, they met Simon the Cyrene coming in from the countryside. They compelled him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means skull. There, they crucified him. They offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he refused it. His garments they divided among themselves, casting them for lots. Over his head they inscribed the charge against him, the king of the Jews. Also there were two insurrectionists cuffed with him, one to his right and one to his left. Those who passed by were shaking their heads in scorn and saying, So you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Save yourself. Come down from the cross. Likewise, the priestly collaborators mocked him as they said to one another, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let the anointed one, the king of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Even the two crucified with him reviled him. Now, from midday there was darkness over the whole land until three in the afternoon. 
And at that hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Those words mean, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But some of the bystanders said, look, he's calling for Elijah. And one of them put a sponge of vinegar on a stick and laid it to his lips. Another said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus, having uttered a loud cry, breathed his last breath. Thank mm-hmm. you. Suddenly, the curtain of the temple was rent in two from the top to the bottom. And those bystanders standing near and the centurion said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Now, 
those that were standing nearby realized the truth of Jesus' crucifixion. Truly, this man was the Son of God. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient to death, yes, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forevermore. Amen.